Milwaukee Tool has a new M12 rotary tool out. Eighth inch collet up front, basically tool free. We're gonna go over that in a little bit. This is our power on and power off switch. We turn that on, very nice, easy to use switch that's out of the way and not gonna get pushed when you don't want it to. As you've seen, we turn it on, the fuel meter turns on here. Also back here, we have our speed control. We can go from 5,000 to 27,500 RPM. And we can adjust this through 12 different settings, even when the tool is off. Now, eventually that will turn off, but it stays on longer than the LED light. So if we were to turn this on, that's full. We can drop that back. And that brushless motor in the inside is going to last a very long time. This is a very ergonomic tool so you're going to be able to handle it well not adjust things even these buttons that push very easily are inset a little bit so you can get your hand around this and move it around now that collet up front it is knurled so you can get your finger around it unscrew it take it off this is very easy to use you can see here's the collet right here pull that guy out no issue for working on this but if you had something in here and you couldn't get your hands around it to tighten it up, or you couldn't get everything out to loosen it up, you can just take this front piece off, and if you turn it right, it will allow you to tighten, or it will allow you to loosen that up. So basically, ah, we just broke that piece. That's one thing I dislike about some of the different accessories that come along with it. They're very brittle, and you have to be very careful when using them. If we take this off, Spin it a little bit. Let's tighten this up so it's not turning. We can see that inside here is basically a little wrench. And that's what allows us to get on this, turn it, and turn it back. And then that just simply slides in there and locks. Very cool idea from Milwaukee. So it allows you to just get in, do what you need to do without having to get your fingers in here and obviously like this, break something that is very brittle. With this tool, you can do a lot of different things, but one thing I'd like to bring up, this is the M12 die grinder. This is a quarter inch collet. Now you can use eighth inch stuff. I've set it in all my stuff. I have this eighth inch adapter, slides right in here, goes from quarter to eighth inch. So essentially, I can do almost the same thing right here little bit of size difference. Obviously it's going to be a lot at the end, but if you're in the market, this guy is variable speed on the trigger and also has three speeds up here. This is the right angle. So if we want to look at size differences and what's going on again, quarter inch collet, you'd have to get the eighth inch adapter. These are super cheap. I'll put a link in the description. But again, this one's going to be four speeds and then have a variable speed trigger. What are you looking to do? What are you looking to buy? Is What are you going to do with it? That's the question. That might answer if you want it, need it, or want one of the other models. The rotary tool does come with a wrench that you can use to do multiple different things. If you didn't want to use that forward cap, you can get it on this end, do what you need to do there. Very easy. It also comes with a screwdriver that's going to work on the end of the included tool that can bolt on grinding discs or anything like that. Now, the end that just broke on me was a Dremel end, not this one. It was... You have to be very careful with what you buy and adapt to this because whatever it is, is going to be spinning at a very high RPM. And that is something you don't want to catch in your eyes or anywhere else. That is very important. Now we have a bolt here that is obviously rusted, but it's also kind of just set with the crimp right here. I want to reuse this bolt. I just want to clean it up. So we're going to take a look at where we're at. Go just over 5,000 RPM clean this guy up where I need to see what's happening. But this is also going to give you an idea of the torque. We're on a low RPM and torque here is very good. Right here is our issue. Don't know if that's something you can see, but we have a couple lines that are Kind of screwed up on this bolt here. We can switch this over. And again, this is pretty easy with your fingers. I have a rotary file here that's meant for threads. 
very easy to use. Again, I'm gonna go slower on this. I can always increase it. that should straighten those threads out. Something like this is gonna have a ton of power if you need it to, and I think that's amazing. This will take up to a two inch disc, which would be comparable to this um, Rolock disc, which is amazing to think that you could put that in here with such a small collet. If you're not familiar with these, these just screw on. I was gonna to try to peel it back to show you what's behind it, but I can just screw it off. This is awesome, especially for sanding, anything like that. Rolock has a million things that you can put on the end, scotch Bright, but these things do some pretty cool stuff pretty fast. Not exactly good for threads, but you get the picture. This is cool. This is the Milwaukee tip here. I just put one of our polishing discs in here. Put a little bit of polishing compound on this. I'm just gonna see how the power goes with this on low. This will be a little bit easier to put a little bit more oomph into it to see. We are on low, 5,000 RPM. And I'm applying a lot of pressure. You can see there. You can listen where the tool is picking up RPM as I put pressure down to make sure it holds what it needs to. That is pretty awesome. If we bump this up a little bit. This thing is holding RPM even if I push hard. And you can hear it coming up at the end, so it's using the computer inside to make sure that it's holding the RPM that it should. Not applying as much pressure here with the speed. I don't think that we need to. We're actually burning this because I do not have enough compound on. So let's just put on a touch more. That's hot. I don't think we need to have as much pressure here. Obviously you would let the tool do more of the work, but in this case, we're trying to figure out how this tool is going to react. Let's start up again on a medium there. There we go. Sounds a lot better. Although I think we burned this pad completely right out. Again, not a big deal. Nice to see how this tool kind of fits in and works in this situation. We are burning the pad again, if you can hear that. Basically because of the heat. Not how you should polish something, especially when you're trying to push that hard to figure out what this tool's gonna do. But again, don't do this to polish. We are testing the tool. Somebody's gonna get in those comments and be like, that's not how you do it. No kidding, buddy but that's how I show you how this tool is going to work. Pretty sweet. So this tool, $129 currently MSRP. Here's my take. This is the die grinder. Not a ton of difference. Usually for what you're doing, it doesn't matter. I prefer having the variable speed trigger, especially when polishing. Now I normally polish different sporting things and if I'm going to work on that I will use that variable speed trigger the on off on off to get into very light places where I don't want to over polish or take any metal away so I can go very very slow and it works this I'd have to kind of bounce back and forth and go in this is kind of in the Dremel area right so a lot of most of the stuff I'm using here is from the Dremel and you've seen how that first little grinding disc or cutting wheel broke. You gotta be very careful with the stuff that you buy here. So buy quality items. That's huge if you're using this. And if you're a hobbyist, make sure you're again, getting some quality stuff in here. So you can really get this stuff spinning. 
and it can be very, very dangerous when it comes apart and it's moving. So I don't want to just hit on the safety because it's going to be a safety area here also, but I feel like I can get better stuff for the quarter inch collet or even if I have to downgrade and I use my adapter, I can use the same stuff that I would here. What do you need and what are the things that you're going after? There's a lot of benefits here with the locking, you know, collet so you can lock it down tool free. This is a pain in the butt, two wrenches. I get it. This is very nice. So it's a matter of what you're going to use it for. And I like the tool. I don't mind the price. It's 200 bucks, I believe, with a battery and a charger. Not horrible for what you're getting. It's small, nine inches. It's not big. I just go back to, for some people, it's going to be, how bad is your addiction? <laughs> how, do you need all three? I definitely don't. But not pe most people might not have all three. They might be going here. So I know I'm off on a little bit of a tangent. I just want to introduce you to the whole line so you can make up your mind if this tool is right for you or not. It's got the power. I can't demonstrate it because I do not have the large enough items for this small of tool. It's going to be awesome to have around the shop for little things and just something you can grab onto and maybe keep the smaller stuff in for these tiny jobs. Uh, but for the most part, this is going to be a niche tool for me. Many other people, it's going to be their daily use tool because it's going to be a hobbyist thing. They're going to be like, this is awesome. The collet, I can switch things, I can do things, I can buy some good stuff that's quick attach at the end. I get it. For some people, this tool is going to absolutely rock. And I'm not saying it's bad. It just doesn't fit perfectly for myself inside the shop. So. I'll leave a link in the bottom in the description to a lot of the stuff I talked about here so you can check that out. I appreciate your time. Very, very interested in your comments. So please leave them below. Give us a like of this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.